Hi everybody, I'm Anthony Joe from Gaijin Pond and today I'm joined by Mr. Vincent Birch from Phoenix Associates. Vincent is the senior HR manager here and he is in charge of the majority of hiring here at Phoenix Associates. And he joins me today to talk about one of the most important aspects of starting your career in Japan, which is getting your resume right. Hi Vincent, thanks for joining me today. Hi Anthony. <laughs> um, can you tell me a little bit about Phoenix Associates? Sure, we offer customized corporate training to businesses both Japanese and international. Um, a lot of our customers are Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we basically provide them with training such as negotiation, presentations, teleconferencing, coaching, a wide range. We also do seminar work and intensives. Wow, okay. And when you guys are hiring, what type of people do you look for? We're looking for people who have had a, a strong business background, so not someone who's straight out of university. Mm -hmm. uh, we're usually looking for people that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, a, bit, a little bit older than other companies perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking for people who have actually worked in an industry so that when we're providing training to that industry, they've got the background there that they can talk about, they can rely on, they can teach. Um, but of course, we also do require some form of teaching ability. Uh, you need to be strong in English, strong in grammar, spelling. Um, not outstanding, but you, you're teaching it, so you need to know what you're talking about. Right, right. So a combination of some business background with uh, fluency in English right, right. is what you're looking for. And I imagine in your job, you see a lot of resumes. <laughs> Yes, I do. Many, many, many. So you've brought one here with you today. Mm. Let's take a look at this resume, which you got. This is an actual resume from the Gaijin Pot database. Yep. And uh, we're going to go through this, and you can tell us what you look for when you're looking at all these resumes and which one stands out, which makes you want to call that person and arrange the interview. So, so let's take a look. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's start with this one. So this is a application uh, to a position we're trying to fill down in Kanagawa area. Okay. First of all, I look at the, the name. For some reason, this person's put their name in capital letters. Right. Almost nobody does that. So when you do it, it does stand out, but not in a good way. Okay. <laughs> Someone's shouting at you, right? right, right, right. <laughs> um, it, it's not the be all and end all, but it, it doesn't give me a very good impression if someone's doing that. Um, I've got my birth details, country, great, fantastic. This one's got the nearest train station, that's good. If I'm thinking about assignments, if I've got specific assignments in mind, I need to know how far they're going to travel. Often people don't put the train station, they put, I'm living in Tokyo. That's not so helpful if I want to try and match you with an assignment, right? Wow, that's interesting. I never would have thought about that. So putting your train station helps you mm. find them a job. Absolutely. Interesting. Okay. Um, we go down this. Good. We've got uh, contact uh, details here. So sometimes you'll find someone doesn't have a phone number. Mm. I can't call them. Uh, they've got an email address and it's just on their phone. So when I send attachments, uh, they can't always read them. Right. So this person's got a Gmail address and a phone number. Fantastic. Uh, let's move down a bit. Right, we've got the visa status. Uh, any job. There are, there are visas which are almighty and visas that are specific. If you've got, say, for example, permanent residency, you've got spouse visa, uh, long term, something like that, you can teach anywhere. Right. However, if you don't have one of the almighty visas, uh, you're a bit limited to what we can uh, use. For example, we can't use a professor visa, we can't use an instructor visa. Okay. So what we'd be looking for would be humanities. Right. This person, however, has just put other. Mm. So on the Gaijin Pot system, when you're applying, you get a whole list of visas. Um, I haven't counted them, but I, there's something over 20 types. Mm. It's very unlikely that it doesn't fit into the types that are offered. Right. Uh, so already I'm thinking other visa. If I've got 40 resumes to go through, I'm going to put this aside and start going on the others because right. I don't know if I can use this person or not. Right. Right, so why waste your time if eventually it turns out they don't have the proper visa well, that you need? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's right. So writing exactly what visa you have mm. is, is best? Yes. Okay. Um, right, now this person here is going to be in Japan three to five years. Great, it's good to know. Um, they've put their qualification here. Now, it says bachelor's degree. First thing I'm going to do is go down and see if I can match it 
to the educational history. Mm. Sometimes you find that what people put in this section for the education, they don't put in this section. Mm. So if you tell me you've got a master's, for example, but then in education it's not written there, right. what am I to believe? Right. Right. So, bachelors, go down here. Um, let's see, we've got two. The first one, no degree acquired. Hmm. Why would someone put that there? So here they've said they have a bachelor degree, but under their education history, they state that they don't have a degree. Right. So there's a conflict right there already in the resume. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, now, if for Phoenix Associates, we need people with degrees. Right. If this person doesn't have a degree, gone. Right. I, I can't do anything. Yeah. Okay. So you don't know right now, right? Because here it states degree, but here it doesn't. Mm. So it's uncertain. Why waste your time? This goes into the other file. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So making sure your all your education history match up mm. everywhere on your resume. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Can you tell me about the photo? Yeah, well, it's interesting you said that because this one doesn't actually have a photo. Um, it's not something that you have to have. Like I'm sure back in Canada, do you have photos? No, we don't put you don't photos. put photos. Yeah, in New Zealand we don't usually put photos. Right, right. Um, in Japan they tend to. Mm. Putting a photo there can be a positive thing. Mm. If you put a photo there and you're dressed uh, like you are, dressed in a suit, a tie, clink art, <laughs> this, is, this is telling me that you're in a presentable state. So right. I can send you to a client and they're going to think, right, this is as a presentable person. Right, right. Um, if, they, if you've got a photo there of you drinking an izakaya, that's not good. Right. If you've got a photo of you uh, with a friend, which you'd be surprised how many people put a friend in their photo, mm. that's not good. Because you don't know which one is which. No, right? well, exactly. I'm looking at two people. I don't know which one's which. No, I don't. <laughs> um, and not, not, then I assume they're not applying together. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, other things with photos, sometimes in the background, you've got like palm trees or you've got um, people walking by. Mm. The point is, you don't want anything to distract from your photo. Right, right. So if I've just got a photo of Anthony in a suit right. with a white background, right. fantastic. Right. That, that's all, that's all you need. Yeah. And one of the good things about here in Japan is, these photos are not very expensive. I mean, some people might think, oh, I need to hire mm. a professional photographer, but you can get these photos done mm. at most train stations. They have that little That's passport box. Booth, yeah, I right. think it's about 500 yen. Yeah. You go in there and it walks you through the whole process. It mm. actually has multiple languages. And boom, you have your professionally made photo right there. Put that on your resume and exactly. you're good to go. Yep. Okay, so, and photos, the Japanese companies do place uh, importance on them, don't they? They do. they do very much so, yeah. So as I say, for me in the initial stage, without a photo, it's not the biggest problem. However, if I do have a professional photo and you pass the screening stage, I give you a call and everything sounds good, I need to be talking to the salespeople, the, one who, the ones who offer the job. Right, right. And like you say, they're Japanese. Right. They see a professional photo, everything fits into place. Right, right. Okay, okay fantastic. Right, okay, um, so I'm looking down uh, at the language, English native level, fantastic, that's what we're going to need. We're teaching English, you've got to be able to speak it. Um, and I, I like it when they have other languages listed, Russian, Japanese here. We don't just do our training in English, we sometimes do Chinese, sometimes we need French, sometimes we need German. Mm. So it's really helpful to have some uh, other language ability listed there. You know, a question that I get a lot from people are if they're from a, a non-native English-speaking country, mm. but their English level is quite high. Mm. Is that a concern for you at all? Say they're from parts of Europe where their English level may be quite fluent, but, but they're not native because it's right. not their national language. Mm. Is that a concern for you? That would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Cool. Um, because it, you've got the components of the spoken language and the written language. Right, right. Um, if you're speaking with a strong accent, it's very difficult to understand. Right. That could pose a problem, because it's clearly taken away from what you're trying to do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you have a slight accent, but it's, it doesn't Im impede uh, comprehension, then it's not a problem. The written part of it, that's where it gets a little bit more, what's the word, 
strict. Okay. Okay. Because if I'm teaching you um, about grammar and um, you know more than me and you're telling me I'm wrong, right. that's a problem. <laughs> And the Japanese, let's face it, they are pretty good at English grammar. <laughs> They're really detail oriented. They really, really are. <laughs> so if you don't have your grammar on the ball, they will call you out on it. <laughs> Sensei, that's wrong. Oh, whoops, yeah. sorry. <laughs> they won't be shy to do so. Right. Right. So you don't have to be a, a full native speaker, but having a good comprehension of grammar, yep. uh, a flat, neutral accent will, will definitely help. Yeah, absolutely. And, but you're also looking for people who speak other languages as well. Yeah. That, that, Yep, it's something to uh, draw upon. So you could start an assignment, you're out teaching presentation skills in English, but then I noticed on here that you've also got French proficiency and we need, uh, it's often private, uh, right. tutoring in French. Okay, okay. And what about Japanese level? Hmm. What's a Japanese level requirement? There is no requirement. Okay, okay. There could, can sometimes be occasions when uh, a client may say that they feel that their English level is so low that they want uh, a trainer that can understand when they're, right. when they're saying something. Right. But that's an exception to the rule. Okay. So it's okay. not a requirement for us. Okay, okay, great, mm. fantastic. Okay, um, if we move along to the work history. Now, before I even turn over, <laughs> one of the things that I find when I look at the resumes that separates a good one and a bad one a good one, a good resume, is going to be consistent in its length of uh, job description. So job number one, it's going to give me this much. Job number two, it's going to give me this much. Job number three, it's going to give me this much. Okay. Okay. If you've worked in a job for six years and you've written me one sentence, and you've worked in another job for three months and you've written a page, what, what are you trying to tell me? Right. You hated yeah. this one, you loved this one? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> So that's, that's what I, I, I like, nice, short, concise. Um, so the description length should be about the same. Should be about the same, yeah. On, on all the jobs, regardless yeah. of how long you've worked for them? Sure, yeah. Um, if you've worked for, if you've worked for just a month or so, if you've got many, many instances of a month, that could be a bit different. Um, but if you say, for example, a 10-year stint at one company and a two-year stint at another oh, company, absolutely. your description should be about the same yes. for, for both of them. Yes. Okay. The purpose of a resume, mm. if you're a job seeker, you make a resume so that you make contact with the recruiter. Right. It's a foot in the door. Right. I don't need to know absolutely everything. What I want to see is look at this. I think you'd be a pretty good fit for this job. Right. Let's progress and have an interview. Right. Okay. Um, and at that stage, you can give me all that information that you want to give me. That's fine. The resume is just trying to get the contact with the recruiter. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. So keeping the work history length of description consistent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and how has this person done? Oh well, let's have a look. Uh, we'll turn over. <laughs> The first job, I've got uh, half a page here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they're telling me all, all sorts of things. How long were they in this job for two years? We've got uh, this much. Yep. Half a page. Half a page. Um, if I go over, I can already see on the other page here, um, under two years, a year, and a year and eight months. And we're going up to three quarters of a page. <laughs> so less time here than here, but is it getting even longer? Right. I don't have time to read novels. I don't. <laughs> I, as, as I said, the purpose of the resume is just a, 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 something for the recruiter to say, do I want to pursue this further or not? Do right. I want to make contact or not? Right, right. I don't need your life story. Right. I really okay. don't. <laughs> I'm sure it's wonderful and I've got nothing against your life story. That's fine. But it's... It's not the purpose of the resume. Right. That's for later at the izakaya, after you get the job. <laughs> after you get the job, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I noticed with this particular one, this person here has a three-year job here. Yes. But this, this history is, one, it's split up over two pages. Yeah. But it's only, what, three or four lines. It is. It is. Um, so we have three bullet points yeah. for the three-year job. And what was it, almost a dozen bullet points <laughs> For the uh, one year, eight months job. Yeah. So that's kind of the inconsistency that, that you're referring to. Exactly. On one hand, you write me a novel, it's too much. But on the other hand, if you say, I answered the phone, it's not enough. <laughs> so if they're all consistent, right. it's much easier just to go through, right? Right, right, okay. okay. Right. Um, if there are large 
gaps in time. We've got a, a year's difference between this job and this job. Right. It's something that I'll definitely ask, but I'll ask you at the um, interview, either the phone interview or the face-to-face -face right. okay. interview. Okay. So it would be something prepared, be prepared to tell me why you've got a year's gap with nothing there. Right. Okay. Were you sitting at home drinking beer, watching hockey? <laughs> um, hey, what's wrong with hockey? Um, there's nothing wrong that's with That's a hockey. job for most Canadians. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Whatever you wish to That's be watching. a dream yeah. job for us Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's something, you know, that a recruiter wants to know. Right, right. Um, so right. just be prepared to have an answer. Okay, okay. And for the job history, how far back should someone go? <sighs> wow. Um, that could depend on age. Because if you're 60 and you've had 20 jobs, it right. would be a bit different from if you're 35 and you've had three jobs. Right, right. Um, I would be happy if you just gave me four, three or four jobs as a start. Okay. If I need more information, again, the resume, the point, gain contact with the recruiter. Right. If I need more information, I may say, can you send me a full resume? Right, right, okay. So okay. three or four is so fine. So three or four jobs, consistent yeah. length on yeah. both is what you're looking for. Right. Okay, great. The exception to that perhaps would be if you had your last two or three jobs had no relevance to the job you're applying for. Mm -hmm. But before that, right. there's, there's, they're relevant. Right. In that case, it would, it would make sense to include those, right? Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. If the job is not relevant to the job they're applying for, should they take it out or include it? Um, that's again, we have to split that into two different um, areas. If it's just a personal resume, I would say tailor your resume to the job. Right. Okay. In the case of the Gaijin Pot system, I don't know if they've got that flexibility or not. But I do know there's the cover letter. Right. So right. for a Gaijin Pot application, I'd want a cover letter that was specifically tailored to the job you're applying for. Okay. Okay. And in the cover letter, mm. how long should it be? I'd say two paragraphs. Two paragraphs. Yep. Um, if you could, uh, if I'll just write on this. Okay. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say, at start, dear hiring manager. Mm. Okay. Now, you're applying for this job, so uh, the first part here, you can tell me um, why you're applying to this job, why you're interested in this job. Then the second part here, tell me why I should choose you. Mm. Why, why are you relevant to this job? What makes you the pick? Right, right. And then, either sincerely, respectfully, like that, with your name. Two paragraphs, done. How important is a cover letter? If you see a resume mm. without a cover letter, uh, do you disregard it? Do you, do you take the time to look at it? How important is it? I wouldn't say I disregard it, but I'm going to prioritize what I spend my time on. Right. Uh, and I see a cover letter. What I see is somebody's thought about the job they're applying for, right. decided that they're appropriate for the job, right. and then they've shown me um, why they're appropriate for it. So all that thought, I'm thinking, okay, they've seen my ad. They want to apply for my job. I'm going to take the time to, to go through this. Right. Okay. Without the cover letter, I'm thinking, ah, they've just seen a, a job on Gaijin Pot, click. Right. Probably another job, click, click, right. click, 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 click. Right. Um, and that's right. one of the dangers of the Gaijin Pot system is that you can do everything electronically. It's just mm. as easy just, just to hit that apply button. Right, right. But we also do offer that cover letter system that w you can tailor the cover letter for every application that you're applying for. You can mm. attach mm. different cover letters. So I think it's very important for anyone who's uh, who's applying for a job system, really take a look at the job yep. and fill out that cover letter that is tailored directly to that job. Exactly. You will stand out amongst everybody else. Exactly. And if you can do it in two paragraphs, even better. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, Anthony, where were we? Uh, personal information. Right. So personal information. If you're applying for a job and you want to give some personal information, that's good. Think about the person who's going over your resume and uh, what they're thinking when they see it. So I look at this, I think, okay, this person likes photography, they like travel, they like creative art, they like um, baking, okay? That's fine, I, I don't have a problem with that. They like entertaining, not sure what that means. Um, that, that's fine, there's a few interests. It's nothing too strange. strange. Uh, next one. Various performance bonuses for exceeding job expectations. 
What does that tell me? What information have I got from that? No. Nothing. I'm not sure what the purpose is. And, and I'm looking here, again, I was telling you about consistency with right. the employment, make it the same. I've got a big space here, and then there's a, a word why here, and it doesn't match, it's right. not. Well, I think the job was at this library, but this uh, person wrote library, and the why on another line. So. Right, it might be French, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but going over your resume with a fine tooth comb to catch small mistakes like that is very important. It is essential, and um, Gaijin Bot makes it easier because you, you make your resume once, and then when you're applying for each job, you're just making a cover letter, two right. paragraphs. Right. It, so you, you put a, a, a bit of time, um, you invest time into your actual resume at the start. Then you don't need to worry about it. It's just the cover letter you're changing. Right. So, you know, if you're, you're trying to represent yourself, what I see is how you're being represented. And something like this, it makes me think you didn't have enough time, it wasn't important enough for you to actually do it properly. Right. And you know, one good tip actually is once you finish your resume, have someone else look at it. Yeah. It's very easy for you. You can, you can look at this thing a dozen times and, and you'll, you'll miss a small mistake like that, yeah. but a recruiter will see it right away. Absolutely. Um, so have yeah. a friend go yeah. over it and like you said, like yeah. once your, your resume is set in the GaijinBot system, yeah. you, you know it's perfect, you know there's no mistakes, mm. then it just comes down to the cover letter. Yeah. And, and also do the same thing. Have someone else review it before you send it off. Couldn't agree with you more. I'm going to take a stack of resumes here, I'm going to go through it, I'm going to go a contact pile and another pile. Right. I don't know what happens to the other <laughs> pile, <laughs> but I do know what happens to the contact pile. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, um, let me see. Computer skills, proficient use of um, Microsoft Office. Great, good to know. Outlook, PowerPoint, fantastic, yep. Um, typing speed, 50 words per minute. Sure, some jobs, you know, totally relevant. No, no problems, that's specific skills that's specific business office type yeah. skills good happy to know it um i won't mention the name of the high school but the high school youth leader award recipient what does that what how does that benefit me what does that tell me uh the next one they were freshman sweetheart cook scholarship <laughs> <laughs> not relevant to a corporate position not overly, <laughs> not overly. Right. If you, if you can get me a three-page Gaijin Pot resume, um, you don't have this kind of information on it. Right. It's not relevant, I don't right. need it. Right. I don't want to know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the personal information, that's, I think a lot of people use that to kind of sell themselves a little bit, sell their personality, it's kind of their hobbies, you know, et cetera. Sure. You kind of want to let the recruiter know a little bit about you more so than what's in your job history, right? but keeping that information relevant to the job you're applying for. If this person was yeah. applying at a bakery, mm. maybe that sweetheart award <laughs> yeah, might have been... Might come into play, yeah. Might come into play. But for a corporate mm. business background, mm. it's not important. No, it really isn't. Um, and you do have other avenues, uh, for example, the cover letter. Right. Um, the kind of style that you're... So you, you'll, you will stand out to me if you do it like that way. If you do it professionally and succinct and you tailor it to the job, you will stand out. Right. And then we'll have an interview and then I'll see your personality and I'll understand you more deeply and you'll stand out even more. Right. You, you, you don't need to do absolutely everything at the resume stage. Right. <laughs> if you just do it succinctly and professionally, then you've got me. Right, right. And like you said earlier, the resume, the goal of the resume is to get your foot in the door. Yeah. To catch the attention of the recruiter so that they put your resume on the contact pile. Right, that's it. And that's it. And then the additional information can come in the interview. That's if, right. if the recruiter asks it. Exactly. Uh, well, that's great. Uh, thank you very much, Vincent. Um, that was extremely helpful. Even for myself, actually, I learned a couple <laughs> of things. So I might update my own resume on GaijinPot. But uh, if you are watching this and you do have a resume on GaijinPot, uh, keep these points in mind. And uh, once again, thanks to Mr. Vincent Wirtz from Phoenix Associates. I'm Anthony Joe from GaijinPot, and we'll see you in the next video.